This is David Prosper, host of the Leadership Revolution. Thanks for listening to the following broadcast from Public House Media. Hey everyone, this is Selena, and you're listening to Stories from Planet Earth. So, I am currently sat in my closet, recording by myself, because I don't have a guest this week. Um, So, last week, I kind of fell into a bit of a coronavirus slump. I, I don't know, it just kind of started really weighing on me. I was feeling really distracted, and there was, like, a lot of anxiety setting in. Um, I'm sure a lot of you out there can relate. I did lose my job a few weeks ago as well, and I think just the reality of everything kind of came crashing down on me maybe last Monday. Um, So it just kind of carried on through the week, and because of that, I just, I could not plan anything. I felt stuck in just all of those things that we're all thinking, like, how long is this going to last? Will we recover from this? Will I recover from this? It was just a spiral. So all that being said, I dropped the ball and I didn't plan ahead and I didn't ask somebody to be on the podcast. So here we are today in my closet together. I will be trying to get back on track the the following week. I do want to keep putting out content for you guys, so I will be making a more concerted effort to get my act together. This does offer some unique challenges, though, because obviously I can't go out and meet people like I would prefer to for interviews, so I'm going to be spending this week figuring out how to do digital interviews, virtual interviews. So if anybody out there has any advice for me on that, that would be great because I have no idea even where to start with that really. So that's my plan. Hopefully things will be back on track next week. Actually, I'm going to promise that they're going to be back on track next week, but I don't want to leave you all hanging. So this week I am just going to do a little discussion, fireside chat, with you uh, just so that I don't have nothing up there this week. So with everything going on, I just wanted to briefly discuss some of the anxieties that a lot of us are feeling right now in regards to productivity and just using this time quote unquote wisely. So I saw this post recently, I think it was on Twitter, Instagram, And I'm going to read the original version. It says, if you don't come out of this quarantine with a new skill, your side hustle started, more knowledge, you never lacked time, you lacked discipline. This angered me for a number of reasons. I, as I clearly stated in the beginning of this, have been one that my productivity is kind of, it's, it's not where it was before this. We'll put it at that. So it's angering that a person out there would try to put this kind of immense pressure on people who are just trying to make it through. We are dealing with something that, something to the scale that we have never seen before. I haven't seen anything like this in my lifetime, and I think a lot of people agree with that. It's just unprecedented and it's it's really scary and whenever we're put into stressful situations it's our body's natural response to slow down and reassess and that isn't exactly cohesive for starting your new side hustle and grinding hashtag grinding through it if you're doing that that's fine But the problem lies in putting that pressure on other people because we're all going to deal with this in a different way. It's going to affect us all in a different way. 
Some people out there might have lost their job, like me. Or maybe they have had to pick up more hours at their job because they're an essential worker. It's You don't know where people are during this. So it is completely and utterly unfair to say you need to be productive in this time. And that just is something that we need to reevaluate as a culture, I believe, because we're always on this go, go, go mode, especially in the United States where I live. So it's just not, it's not healthy. And of course, it's important to get your work done. It's important to, you know, try to stay accountable for building a beautiful life around yourself. But that doesn't mean never taking breaks. It doesn't mean grinding until you can't no more. Like, it's just, it's, it's more about just finding a balance between work and self-care, especially in this time. So, luckily, I did come across a different version of this post. So, it says, if you don't come out of this quarantine with a new skill, your side hustle started, or more knowledge, you are doing just fine. We are going through a collective traumatic experience. Not everyone has the privilege of turning a pandemic into something fun or productive. And that was such a breath of fresh air to me because we need that sort of mentality in this time. We need to be supportive of each other and we can't be putting those, you know, antiquated social norms on ourselves in these moments. And we shouldn't ever, in my opinion. So I was really relieved to hear this take on that post. Take that how you will. I just wanted to kind of tell you if you don't already know that you don't have to be productive right now. You are doing just fine making it through. With that being said, I did want to share a few things that have been helping me through my anxieties with it. Of course, it's not a one-size-fit-all kind of a thing, but I did want to share it just in case, you know, somebody out there can use it. So one of my biggest tips whenever you're feeling kind of crappy and things are weighing on you, is to change your clothes, wear something nice. You don't have to put on jeans, but, you know, something other than your pajamas. Put on an outfit that makes you feel good because whenever we're just sitting around in our scrubbies all day, it's it, it can kind of affect your mood, I think. Another thing is to try to regulate your sleep s- schedule because... It's easy to just fall into, like, going to bed really late and then waking up really early. But I think that if you have, like, a pretty consistent sleep schedule, that can also help you feel like a sort of normalcy, which is helpful for me to feel that I have control of some kind of normalcy in this time. Another huge one, go outside, go outside. Of course, do it responsibly. Don't go anywhere crowded, but take a walk through your neighborhood. If you have some hiking trails near you that aren't over congested, take a walk, take your dog out, take your cat out, take your lizard out, whatever. Just go outside if you can. Feel the sun on your skin. It'll make you feel better, or at least it makes me feel better. Another really awesome thing that's been helping me through this is video calling and calling in general my friends and my family in this time. I think I've had more phone calls and video calls in the last like two weeks than I have in maybe the previous year. I've just been doing a lot of like watching Netflix shows with my friends or playing games with my friends through video call and that has been amazing. So that's something I really encourage people to try to do. In my last little piece of advice would be to create in any way you can, whether that's watercoloring, writing, singing, playing an instrument, graphic design, whatever your medium is, just try to like make something in this time. And, and you might be saying, I'm not creative. No, that's not for me. I believe that every single person is born with 
some sort of creative root to them. So it's worth trying at least to tap into during this time. But of course, I do want to emphasize that if you are just doing your best to make it through the day, that is plenty. Um, Just take care of yourself and take it day by day. If you have the energy to do it, try some of these things. It might make you feel better. So as a send off to this very brief episode, I did want to share a lighthearted story, kind of embarrassing because this is after all stories from planet earth. So I am going to tell you all my very first encounter with identity theft. So I was watching a Drew Gooden video on YouTube. Um, I think it might have been his most recent video, but basically the premise is that his wife Amanda takes over the channel and they just do a bunch of things that she would do with the channel. And one of the first things they did was log into her Neopets, which she's had since 2003. That is impressive. So (laughs) it was really cute and it just brought up a bunch of memories of my time playing Neopets as a kid because that was my jam. I loved Neopets whenever I was younger. And then I was confronted with just the most awful memory, the worst, the lowest low in my time with Neopets. And that was when my identity was stolen on my Neopets account by my, uh, it was my fault, honestly. Um, (laughs) So I don't know if anybody out there played Neopets, but basically the game was you had little tiny virtual pets and I can't remember I think you could have multiple at the same time and I loved the game I would spend hours on it there were just different there were different realms that you could explore I remember there was a spooky one and a fairy island it was amazing and there was also a forum where you could talk to other people with Neopets accounts so I was hopping on the forum chatting with my internet friends and I met someone on one of these forums and they were really friendly and I was like, oh yeah, this is awesome. So I think, I don't remember if we were chatting within the forum. No, I believe what happened was we were like chatting privately and they're like, oh, that's so cool. You're doing so well on your Neopets account. And I was like, thank you. Thank you. I might've been like flexing too hard or something because this person then says, I can help you get more Neopets money. In my like nine or ten year old self was like really I'm interested and they were like okay this is super simple all I need from you is your Neopets email and your password to the account and I was like easy sure not knowing the realities of the world and that that is a very bad idea (laughs) so this person who I thought was my internet friend went into my account and stole all of my Neopets money, transferred it to themselves, and then left me in the dust. And I messaged them all angry, like, I can't believe you stole my stuff. That is so messed up. Like, this is not fair. I'm going to call the cops on you. And I just remember being so mad. I told my mom about it, and she had very little sympathy for me. She was just like, you shouldn't have given them your password. Come on. Internet 101, kid. Got to learn the rough way. And I did. I, (laughs) yeah, the the person didn't seem very remorseful. They kind of laughed about it. They're like, you're stupid, kid. And yeah, that was, that was one of the sadder moments of, of my time on the internet. And I hope in some small way that has brought you joy in this very strange time in our world. That's pretty much all I have for you this week. Like I said, I will be back on schedule next week. In the meantime, please take care of yourself, and I will talk to you soon. Thank you so much for listening to another episode of Stories from Planet Earth. If you have some time, leave us a review, and be sure to subscribe anywhere you listen to podcasts. Find us on Instagram at sfpepodcasts. I'll talk to you next week.